It all began with a painted line and an uncertainty of who had crossed it first. It grew in the tire tracks of upset winners who mixed it up with some of the greatest drivers in the world. It rose to prominence on the shoulders of legendary figures who clashed with reckless abandon around 31 degree corners. A new spectacle of sound and speed took shape, new technology and automotive ingenuity spawning angry sheet metal beasts that inch closer to the edge of control. With a new generation of racer came a new form of racing, their machines more advanced than the last, but the battleground remained unchanged, holding fast to its yearly challenge. And so, as February returns to Florida, 43 compete for a chance at history. Two and a half miles, 200 laps at speeds approaching 200 miles per hour. It is the great American race, the Daytona 500. The 500 was the moment that propelled Jimmy Johnson to the first of his unprecedented four consecutive Sprint Cup championships. Today, the 48 team hopes the road to title number five begins with a second Harley J. Earl Trophy and crew chief Chad Knauss in victory lane. The 500 was the victory that just slipped from Kyle Busch's grasp last year when this wreck on lap 123 brought his dominant run to an end. Today, he has a new crew chief but the same drive to give Joe Gibbs his first 500 in 17 years. The 500 is the single trophy missing on Tony Stewart's shelf to go with the many he's picked up at Daytona. Today, we will see if he can avoid the early engine failures, mid-race crashes, and last lap passes that have plagued him in 11 previous starts. But perhaps the biggest story in today's field is the man they will all be chasing when the green flag drops. Today, the 500's oldest pulse hitter, Mark Martin, makes his 26th start. After a magical 2009, will the man from Arkansas become the 33rd driver to enter this most hallowed ground? All these stories and more will unfold coming up next. The Daytona 500 is finally here! Ladies and gentlemen, I am Brock Beard, and this is your starting lineup as they have qualified for the 52nd Annual Daytona 500. With his first 500 pole in his 26th attempt at the tender age of 51, it's the Mark V of Mark Martin. And joining him is his Hendrick teammate and fan favorite, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Row 2, both of them winners of incredible photo finishes on Thursday. It's the 40 dominate to four-time and defending Sprint Cup champion, Jimmy Johnson, and the Budweiser Ford of Washington's Casey Kane. You really have to give a call to Johnson in particular. He won his race in a backup car following this incident with Denny Hamlin on Wednesday. Row 3, 2007 winner Kevin Harvick won the last two runnings of the Budweiser shootout. And in car 14, making his 12th attempt at an elusive 500 victory, it's the Rushville Rocket, Tony Stewart. Row 4, the wild thing, Kyle Busch looking to finish what he started after he led 88 laps last February. And the destroyer, Juan Pablo Montoya, starts 8th for the second straight year. Row 5 has the warrior from Emporia, Clint Boyer, an impressive run despite having to go to a backup following this crash on Wednesday, and the blue deuce of Kurt Busch. Row 6, Leakin Swift, it's Regan Smith in a Chevrolet, and the Ford of the Master of Disguise, Elliot Sadler, who came up just short of a 500 win last year. Row 7, Joplin, Missouri's Jamie McMurray, last fall's Talladega winner, looking to cap off a superb Speed Weeks, and the New Jersey Fury, Martin Truex Jr. in the Napa Colors. Row 8, Dangerous A.J. Allmendinger made yet another of his patented saves, driving King Richard's 43 on Thursday, and last year's Rookie of the Year, sliced bread himself, Joey Logano. Row 9, The Rocket Man, 2008 winner Ryan Newman, very fast in qualifying, and in the Kroger Toyota, it's the Tasmanian Devil, Marcus Ambrose. Row 10, the amazing David Reagan in his fourth 500, and Huda Man, David Rudaman in the old Aaron's Dream Machine. Row 11, the Wonder Boy, three time 500 winner Jeff Gordon was forced to a backup car after finding the wall on Thursday. And the same fate almost befell the red bulldozer of Brian Vickers, who was on the very edge of control while battling for the lead. Row 12, the Biff Meister, Greg Biffle for Roush Fenway, and defending 500 champion, mighty Matt Kenseth. 
Row 13, Denny Hammer and Hamlin had a strong finish last season and hopes to continue that momentum with a good showing today. And his good buddy in the Penske Dodge, last spring's Talladega winner, Brad the Big Keslowski. Row 14, it's black, it quacks, it is sponsored by Affleck, the 99 of Catch Fence, Carl Edwards. And what a run for Mike Bliss in the Wave Energy Drink Chevrolet. Bliss was fast in qualifying, but this wreck on Wednesday forced Tommy Baldwin's team to roll out the backup. On Thursday, Bliss climbed into the very same car Scott Riggs raced into last year's 500 and made it two in a row for the 36 team. Wow, that was a lot of fun. It was fun because we're sitting here today and we're in the Daytona 500 with this <laughs> Wave Energy Drink car. Row 15, what a job by the Texas Twister, Michael McDowell. He makes his first 500 start after racing his way in, driving a second Phil Parsons car. I feel like I won the Daytona 500 and just real excited to be here and racing on Sunday. Next to him, it's the need for Scott Speed. Row 16, another great story of Speed Week's 2010. How about that Mad Max Pappas? On the final lap of Thursday's duel, Pappas in the blue car was just hanging on with old tires and still fought his way past the black car of Todd Bodine to snag the final transfer spot and his first 500 start. And uh, this, uh, we made it from our heart. I drove it as hard as I could in the last four, five, six laps and uh, it's... Uh, I'm speechless. Starting next to Pappas is the bright yellow fella, Paul Menard, in his fabulous fluorescent Ford. Row 17, John Andretti makes his third straight 500 for Front Row Motorsports and owner-driver Robbie Gordon in the Monster Machine. Row 18, full throttle Travis Quapel extends his own streak of making the 500 next to the Dodge of Sideways Sam Hornish Jr. Row 19, Robert Richardson Jr. finished 18th in his Sprint Cup debut last fall at Talladega. Today, he'll debut Front Row Motorsports' new third team. And road race ace Boris Said puts the attitude in Latitude 43. Three motorsports. Row 20, the mayor, Jeff Burton, starts 39th after this costly blown tire on Thursday. And in 40th, this two-time 500 winner, awesome Bill Elliott for the Wood Brothers. Row 21, Nemco Joe Nimichek locked himself into the field on speed for the second time in three years. And Bobby Labonte gives TRG Motorsports its first start in the 500. And in row 22, after crashing out of a transfer spot late in his Gatorade duel and waiting on pins and needles to see if he was going to make the field on speed, the Napa Maniac, two-time 500 champion Michael Waltrip, snags the 43rd and final starting spot. This place is crazy, man. <laughs> Why does it have to be like that? 11 cars missed the field for today's race. Reed Sorensen and Braun Racing's first foray into Sprint Cup racing. Casey Mears for the new keyed up motorsports team misses his first 500. David Gilliland missed the show with Bam Racing. Jeff Fuller in a second Nemco Toyota. The Cuban Missile Arik Almarola in James Finch's unsponsored Chevrolet. Truck Series veteran Terry Cook after a spin knocked him out of contention on Thursday. The Buckeye Bullet Dave Blaney for Phil Parsons. 1990 Daytona winner Derek Cope. Todd Bodine after a spirited run in Kirk Shelmerdine's Toyota, Mike Wallace in the Brian Keselowski owned car, and 58 year old ARCA veteran Norm Benning. And ladies and gentlemen, there's your field for the great American race.